than by showing each of us in our daily lives those essential virtues of courage, loyalty, true religion, a devotion to duty, kindness and sympathy, which marked his whole life. His life as a king was one of constant and unremitting serving. His duty to his peoples throughout our commonwealth was always in his thoughts, even to the last conscious hours of his life. I am glad and proud to unveil a statue of my father, in which the peoples of the United Kingdom and of the Commonwealth and Empire have set up as a memorial to him. And my dear mother and I I deeply appreciate the terms of the address to which we have just listened and the tribute that it pays at the King George's quality. His life as a king was one of constant and unremitting service. His duty to his peoples throughout our commonwealth was always in his thoughts even to the last conscious hours of his life. He shared with them their hopes and disappointments of their happiness and their sorrow. In the simple, kindly phrases of his broadcast, he made himself known to them all, and he created a new and individual relationship with each of them for the king and became to them a real person whose voice and sentiments are very recognized. Of the 25 years of his reign, 
were full of danger and difficulty, of which the convulsions of our own day have perhaps a temporary obscure. But during these years, his qualities of courage, faith and faithlessness grew ever more strong. And he won for himself what he most a desire of the confidence and love of his subjects all over the world. His was a wide and generous sympathy. All things that made for the welfare of his people had his wholehearted support. A guiding principle of his life was care for the well-being of all sorts and conditions of men. The children and the young people had a special place in his affection, and he would have rejoiced in the playing field scheme, which is part of the national memorial and in the progress that it has already made. Throughout his reign, my father served the Constitution with an unswerving loyalty. It is fitting that his tattoo should stand here in the heart of London, between the Abbey, where he was crowned, and the Houses of Parliament, where the business of the state was conducted in his name and where by the statute of Westminster and the crown became the golden circle within which all the three dominions of the British Commonwealth were united.